wonderful people of the YouTube. My name is Asleep, and today we're going to be cheer listing a nostalgic cartoon, which is Ben 10 original series. I've heard great things about it in the Ben 10 fandom and even people outside the Ben 10 fandom, which make me question, is it really that great? So I'm going to be going back and looking at the finale of this season and see if it holds up. And if you like this video and want me to do more of this, maybe I can continue doing the Alien Force version, or maybe I can go back and do the premiere, or maybe do the whole season. So yeah, enjoy the video. So we started the episode the same usual way that Benton has been starting. Ben's doing stuff, like in this case, chasing the criminals. Ben take out the criminals, and we got an update on what humans think about the appearance of aliens on Earth. Wait, what's this? It looks like we have another alien sight. Which is pretty nice, I wish they do this more often in their classic series. Because in this classic series, Ben was still starting out, so it was interesting how he's gonna hide this secret identity, how his heroics interact with the world. Kinda of sad that we didn't get to see more of this because in Alien Force onward, they really didn't dive into it that much. And in Ultimate Alien, he got his secret identity reveal, so it's kinda of unfortunate that we didn't get to dive into this aspect more. But let's continue. Now we got our first introduction to Vilgax's new form. Vilgax, who is the villain that's been built up since the beginning of this season and the big bad of the first two seasons of this show. I will talk about him more when we get into the episode, but he's arguably the best part of these two seasons. With his restoration finished, he's ready to hunt down the one who wielded the Omnitrix. After the intro, we cut back to Ben, who's wake up from the nightmare. Grandpa Max is about to brush it off as a normal nightmare, but when Ben explained what he saw, Grandpa Max decided it's time to drove off. Oh, that's rhyme for some reason. We cut back to Spade, where we see Wilgas trying to track down the Omnitrix. Via a method that tracked down when it's activated. Which also come back in season 2 when he tried to track down the Omnitrix again. Next scenes we see how it was activated. Which by Ben who was getting bored and wanted to mess with his cousin a little. But he changed back after he was getting lectured by Max. I like these sequence of scene. Because it's explained how Vilgax tracked down Ben and sent robots after him and stuff. And also, it explains how Ben, even though he's experienced much with being a hero, he still doesn't take it seriously and still have some fun with his Omnitrix, which is honestly fitting for uh, someone his age. Probably because I'm not 10 years old, I don't have a space for Alien Watch, so I don't know how I would feel when I got the space Alien Watch when I would do it. Also, classic forearm hand reveal, holy shit! After Vilgax tracked down Ben's location, he's starting to lure Ben out by landing nearby the city and start wreaking havoc on it. Which worked because Ben has that hero instinct. Even though Grandpa Max tried to warn him, thinking it was a trap, Ben just think, well, that town need a <laughs> After disregarding Grandpa Max's concern, he just flew off as heat blast to go fight the drones. Which is a problem that he still have because even though this whole season is about him learning how to become a hero from his grandpa, he is still being an ignorant and try to act on his own instinct sometime, which eventually put him in grave dangers. Like this one because it made him fall right into Vilgax's trap. Because after he destroyed all the drones, Vilgax tries to attack him by stapling him to the wall. And this is the first time we saw Vilgax's new form properly. That is in shadow, that is in teeth. This is the first time we see him in his muscular cybernetic form. This is also their first encounter between each other. Which make him really menacing and make him a great threat, especially in Ben's early career. After their brief exchange, Ben back out of the cuffs and tried to attack Vilgax, but due to his cybernetic enhancement, fire did nothing. And Vilgax responded by throwing him through the fucking building. Like I know this might be exaggerated a little, but it's it really show how strong he is after he get his enhancement. Which is also why people might say this is the best Vilgax because his first impression is just so fucking menacing that it's engraved in your mind that this guy's a big deal. Anyway, after that, Ben just smelled the road to slow down Vilgax and ready to fight him again. But Grandpa Max swoop in first to stop the fight while briefly had a flashback. He tell him to get in and warn him to not mess with Vilgax. You do not want to pick a fight with Vilgax. Uh, how do you know his name is Vilgax? Grandpa, what aren't you telling us? 
He then proceeds not explain how dangerous Vilgax is or who is Vilgax, which leads to Ben underestimating Vilgax's power and try to fight him head on again. Now I don't know how to explain why he doesn't tell his grandson about what Vilgax is or who is Vilgax, because Vilgax seems like a pretty big deal. You would thought that Grandpa Max would tell about him. It's not like he's gonna keep his plumber stuff a secret throughout this whole entire episode because he's eventually revealed it when they reach the plumber base in Mount Rushmore. So like, why didn't he just tell Ben now so that it could prevent Ben getting kidnapped right here? But I guess that's just up for interpretation on why he didn't tell them. So let's just continue. After Ben took down the drones, Vilgax found him. But in this scene, it's actually kind of revealed that Sting 5 might be stronger than we think by him holding up this Vilgax in the air with a little struggles only. While Ben and Vilgax still going at it, Gwen asks what's going on. Grandpa Max still doesn't explain her anything, even though he's gonna explain it anyway when they reach the Mount Rushmore base. So instead of just explain them on the way because it's gonna take a long time anyway, he just wait until he they got to the Mount Rushmore base so that he can explain it with evidence proof for some reason. Even though he's their grandpa, so they're probably gonna believe him anyway. They're 10. What do you think? Comment down below, maybe we can get some new perspective and spawn new discussion around this stuff. Anyway, after Vilgax caught Ben and blow up some building a little bit more, he turned Ben back into his human form, which very uncommon before this, and shocked a lot of people when they first saw it, which cemented Vilgax as the best even more because he's not only menacing, he's also intelligent and knows his shit, you know? Anyway, he's got a little bit mad about child wielding the Omnitrix and tried to take it off of him. But here, we got our first introduction to Omnitrix failsafe, which introduced as a feedback. Also, let's just appreciate this animation of like Vilgax slamming into the walls and smoke coming out. I feel like I haven't appreciated the visual and the animation enough. Even though the classic series is like one of the most detailed series in the whole franchise alongside Omniverse. Anyway, let's get back to the energy feedback stuff, which Vilgax Look at theorize that yes, the Omnitrix has already merged with your own DNA. But in later in the franchise, seemingly has been disproven because when it's been removed, sometimes it doesn't have any physical pain on him, which is kind of weird because isn't it bonded with his DNA? So maybe comments your theory if it actually born with him or not. Anyways, Ben got kidnapped with his spine broken and Vilgax destroying building one last time before he leaves. We cut back to Gwen and Max entering the Mount Rushmore base, which is a decommissioned plumber base. If you aren't that familiar with Ben 10 in general, Ben 10 has two plumbers, normal plumbers and galactic plumbers, which Max is a part of. Also, in classic theory, we're only seeing that plumber is only on Earth, but in Alien Force onwards, they expand it to be an intergalactic law enforcement, which maybe contradicts a few things in classic theory, but it's neither here or there, so. Anyways, while Grandpa Max is searching and finding the weapon that can destroy Vilgax, we cut back to Ben on Vilgax's ship. Here we get a revelation of his true motive on why he tried to hunt down Ben and get the Omnitrix, which is... Picture an entire army, each in command of an Omnitrix, and all at my command. Basically a universe domination. Why? I guess it just seemed fun for him, I guess. Anyway, we cut back to Grandpa Max who just got out of the promo base, who's trying to enter Vilkax's ship by crashing. Which Gwen really, really excited for. After giving each other I hate you eyes, Max shoot laser at Vilgax, presumably to buy them time, or maybe knock out Vilgax to buy them time. Vilgax machines start to interfering with Omnitrix systems, changing Ben at random times to random aliens. And may I say, these transformation sequences are absolutely fantastic. Classic series is always so detailed about their morphing and their transformation. Just look at how Warham just push it out of Wildmutt from the inside like that. It's just perfect. Anyways, after breaking out and fighting some drones, Vilgax get up and try to kill Max. And also hinting about their past rivalry against each other. As you can see, I'm much stronger than in our last it really saying a lot about his healing chamber, about how advanced he is, and about how it make him more powerful than ever. Which kind of makes us question, what if Ben fight a slimmer Vilgax? Would he be able to take him on easier, or would he just be the same? 
But that's besides the point. So here's a random burst energy Ben got when he tried to save his grandpa. Transforming to a rip jaw, now Ben is stuck on Mount Rushmore. Also, Grandpa Max doing little something something with Vilkax's ship, but I'm sure hope it won't explode the ship or something. Anyway, Ben almost died from either dehydration or Vilkax, but Omnitrix come in clutch and transform him into Accelerate, which is useful for running away, but not useful for Ben ignoring ass who just trying to beat up Vilkax, which he should have realized that if he blasts, the aliens that arguably might be stronger than Accelerate can do shit to him, then Accelerate don't stand a chance. And I would just destroy a monumental statue, man. Well, the plumber covered the fees of property damage. Anyway, after wrecking Ben at the Serralage, Ben transformed into Diamond Head and still can't do shit to his armor. Which means upgrade is very strong for pushing Vilkax out of his ship, or his middle body isn't as strong as his armor on the other parts of his body. Which, the part is also keep relatively the same as his slim form. Anyway, after Ben got wrecked by Vilgax and escaping as Ghost Freak, we cut back to Max and Gwen who's getting out of Vilgax's ship after it landed. Or crashes, as per se. They come into contact with Vilgax who can make noise from behind and appearing in front. Doesn't seem so bad. Ben! We cut back to Ben who was confronted by Vilgax who had already captured Gwen and Max. Who then made a proposal? Who then made a proposal? 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 Who then made a proposal that if Ben gave him the Omnitrix, he wouldn't kill his family, which Ben presumably chose to give up his Omnitrix or trying to trick Vilgax. Due to him being wild mud, we can't really see what he's saying. So this might just be a part of a trick and he didn't actually want to give up and just want his family away from Vilgax's grab so that they wouldn't be hurt while he's trying to fight him. Also, do you remember the something something Max do to Vilgax's ship? But I'm sure hope it won't explode the ship or something. Why would I? The auto-destruct launch sequence has been initiated! Yeah, that's kinda happened and Vilgax get a back shot. Then Ben transformed into Heat Blast and fly it off the ship, leaving Vilgax to die. Which is probably one of the smartest ideas he has in this episode. And that's the end of the episode. You know, despite all my criticism, which is mostly me teasing the show about some plot holes maybe in the episode, it's actually pretty good. Let's talk about the plot. The plot is really nice, it wraps up everything in season 1. Like the main villain and maybe establish some mystery in season 2. And even though there may be some like issue with the story in the episode, it's not that much of a big deal. Like Ben being ignorant even though he has to learn this whole entire season. Or like I said that Vilgax just teleporting or walking really fast. It's not really an issue that is like ruined the whole plot. It's just an issue that I just want to point out because I feel like it's kind of funny. The animation, yes, the animation is very phenomenal. And Vilgax's design is probably one of the best of his iteration. I like it. So yeah, I'm gonna give this first season finale an S tier. Yes, our first episode is an S tier. Is any other episodes gonna live up to this? Maybe, maybe not. So let's see on our second finale episode review. We're starting off seeing a ship picking up an ice with something inside. We cut on to the ship where we see Kevin, an enemy Ben made after breaking off with him and making him turning into an amalgamate of all 10 aliens Ben had. He's always give off some salty X vibe for me. Then we reveal that Kevin's going to fight Vilgax in this ship, which is an arena called Big Cruise, where fighters from worlds fight each other. Kevin took it over after being abandoned by Ben after he tried to betray him. Let's talk about Vilgax being in a knife block. That's a pretty brutal explosion. Fucking sent Vilgax spiral out of the atmosphere, frozen and cross paths with a fucking big cruise. Also having two big bad of Ben duking it out is pretty neat, not gonna lie. Cause now we can see how powerful the two compare to each other. We cut to the tennis and having a shield day at a waterfall. Gotta say, this raincoat design are very nice. But Ben wasn't shielding with them cause he'd be jamming that watch or fidgeting it, I guess. This is where the iconic master control was sort of born. What a funny how the arguably most powerful command in the watch is accessed by twisting it the same way 12 times. Which I think is also pretty neat cause I don't know if it's intentional or not but we have seen 12 aliens so far in Ben's watch. It's a pretty cool easter egg if it were intended. 
Anyway, he figured it out pretty quickly what the master control do, which is basically transform you into any alien you think or speak instantly. He then transform into Ripjaw to save a drowning person, then jump out and transform into Stingfy mid-air. I think this would be a teaser on how Ben Wu soon master this master control, which actually show how smart Ben is and how adaptive he is. 95. People think I'm not paying attention, but I am. My 98 is starting to feel really weak. We then cut back onto the ship with Kevin angered Vilgax and quickly got his ass served. Also, we got a cool shot of Vilgax's arm pumping big, which technically we already seen it, but I didn't show it in the last season finale. So yeah, here's that. They find and it's show that Vilgax even though has been weakened by his battle against Ben and recently got out of an ice block, is still as powerful as ever. But it ends with Vilgax recognizing that Kevin is an amalgamate of Ben 10's original aliens. Now we never know how he actually recognized these 10 because they're like 1 million plus alien in the Omnitrix. But this can maybe shock up to him having the most extensive knowledge on the Omnitrix that he can recognize what the first 10 alien was in the watch. The scenes then end with Vilgax and Kevin seemingly team up. We then cut back to the Tennyson with Ben messing around as Sing file ruining people's food. Ben is kind of an asshole in this scene. Gwen just wants some food, then there's liquidify not edible wasabi in her food. Grandpa Max then warns Ben about what could happen if Ben stay in the alien form for too long, which according to Gwen was around an hour hours now, which Ben disregard and stole his food. Also spoiler alert, this behavior will be his downfall. Then we cut back again to Vilgax and Kevin, with Vilgax calling back to how the Omnitrix may be bonded with Ben, like how the aliens DNA are bonded with Kevin right now. We can see here that they are forming a plan to take off the Omnitrix from Ben, which is seemingly impossible due to both of them already trying in the past and fail, but seems like Vilgax got something up his tentacle because he don't have sleeves, so he's not got the trick up his. Also, the nickname that Kevin came up for Vilgax, which is Vilky, is kind of funny. Also, I don't know what to say about that, but it's just funny. The scene end revealing that Vilgax somehow connect the system on the ship to the system that will be able to track Ben when the Omnitrix was in use, which is perfect because Ben has just been alien for the past hour, even though we should have alert them earlier, but maybe because there is some time dilation and stuff I guess, that's why it didn't alert them earlier. Still kinda weird for me though. We then cut back to the Tennyson and it's MONTAGE TIME! Woo! Anyway, while Ben is doing an experiment on Spitball, then... Vilgax and Kevin jump scare and immediately turn Ben back into a human. Also, I like how he kind of felt surprised that they both are alive. Kevin? Vilgax? You're alive. Like, he intended to just fucking kill them when they last met. <laughs> what a hero. Luckily, the master control are still activated, so he transformed to gray matter and escaped Vilgax's palm. But then he got captured again, so Ben decided to take on both Vilgax and Kevin, which seemed like a bad idea, but hey. At least give us some cool fight thing. Ben then flee to see him because he have to get his family to the safety first. After getting his family to safety, Grandpa Max warned Ben that he can't beat both Vilgax and Kevin, which is a reasonable concern because last time Vilgax being defeated by the co-op from his family and Kevin being beaten first time due to Sad's missile. But Ben disregards Grandpa Max's concern again, and he used Accelerate to run off again. We then cut back to Vilgax and Kevin trying to track down Ben, but they got cannonballed by Ben. Yeah, I'm very proud of that one. While that's happening, we cut back to Grandpa Max plotting something, which is involved the Null Void Projector, which the Projector appeared in the first episodes of this season. But it's kind of bring a question, why didn't he just use this any time before this? Because he never used it, he only used it now. Maybe because there's some plumber protocol or he just doesn't want to use it if it's not necessary I guess. But I mean they also sent some maybe sentient aliens in there instead of you know trying to bring them back to their planet because plumber is intergalactic and all. But eh I digress. Anyway after Vilkax and Kevin got jump scared by then, Vilkax decided to go after Max and Gwen cause 3v2 is kinda unfair. You know like retired law enforcer, currently somewhat powerless girl, and Watchboy has better odds against hybrid brat with anger issue and evil Squidward, but buffs. So they tried to capture them, but because Vilgax monologuing, Max monologue back by trying to suck them into the null void. But before Vilgax and Kevin got sucked in, Ben and Diamond jump in and didn't listen to Max 
Warning again. Also, nice detail that Diamond has seems to be resisting the gravitational pull of the null void very well. Due to him being heavy and all, bro just casually jogging over here. Anyways, entering null void, this is our first visual appearance of it. Which the design is probably the second best in my opinion in the whole franchise. With Omniworth being the first. Also, more tentacle aliens. Woo! Anyways, Bensley, why they were distracted. While that's happening, Zilk has learned how to train your tentacle aliens. We then cut back to Gwen and Max, with Max planning to go and rescue Ben. But Gwen said, no, uh, it's risky. You might stop here and die. So Grandma Man hesitantly decided to let her go in instead. This scene is short, but to me, it portrays a great improved trust in Max for his grandchild. He knows that it's risky and they might die, but he still has that trust that they might make it out alive. Especially in this kid, which is Gwen, are shown very capable throughout the series. Most prominently being in the Lucky Girl episode, which she's shown to be doing a lot of acrobatics. Anyways, we cut back to Ben and he's back, flying on his fire comet thing from the tentacle aliens. He unfortunately gets chomped and keep in the mouth of one of the tentacle aliens. While oh, that's happening though, Ben's just like, wait, I have master control. I can just master control my way out of this. And get what's one of the coolest and best action scene in the whole franchise of Ben 10. I'm gonna let it play for a bit. So dope. It really shows how quick Ben is to adapting to his new abilities and stuff. This scene is chef kiss with all the effects and animation. I don't really know that much, but it just looks cool and I like that. They go so hard on this scene just by the visual alone. Then we come back to Gwen suiting up and entering the null void. She has around 10 minutes or so before the portal closed, so she on the time pressure here. In the null void she encountered the Havoc Beast, one of the most common aliens in the null void. Nice quick thinking, Gwen. Eventually, she found Ben as a sting fly with the indication of him being stinky. Which is the second time, as far as I remember, that she commented on the smell. With the first being stink fly debut in Washington, B.C. And it's not gonna be the last time for a stink fly being stinky. They both try to make it to the portal, but Kevin jump scare and Gwen's now held hostage. Also, bro fucking crush her hand here. Then trying to get Gwen back, but Vilgax jump scare also. Now he's around it and has to make a decision of whether give watch or Gwen dead. Ben chose to give up his watch. Hey, her hand's fine now. Ben did something to his watch, and we never know how he know how to do that, and let Kevin take his watch. Although, while Kevin tried to take off his watch, he's shown to be very strong against this feedback, like resisting that and still pulling through even though he got knocked back a bit. Even Vilgax can't do that, and just got plopped into the building. Anyway, let's talk about this scene, cause it's iconic, so we have to put some focus on it. The animation are still pretty cool, but this also show Ben as his heroic core, which is that he wouldn't do the right thing, whether it's to protect his family or to help the law enforcement on their duties. He doesn't have to do all this because he has the Omnitrix, one of the most powerful devices in the universe, and nobody can deny his decision. Just take the bad Ben from Omniverse, like Mad Ben, who enslaved his whole city and nobody was brave enough to resist the command, until Prime and 23 showed up and helped them rise up. The point is that Ben doesn't have to do all of this, but he chose to do it anyway, just because it's the right thing to do. His personality, especially after this, he's gonna be flip-flop a little bit, but his core personality and moral is gonna stay the same. That's what Grandpa Max teach him, and that's the right thing for him to do. After the Omnitrix removal, Kevin double-crossed Vilgax, and that's not gonna be the only time Vilgax got double-crossed, and tried to escape alone. Due to Vilgax and Kevin fighting each other because both won the Omnitrix, it caused the Omnitrix to fall off and got caught by Gwen mid-air, resulting to them temporarily teaming up again. Vilgax trying to convince Gwen to give him the Omnitrix back, so Gwen throw it away for them to get it. Then, Ben jumped out of Gwen's hand and tried to stall Kevin for Gwen to escape. Then he parkour the shit out of Kevin and escaped. After they both made it out, Gwen revealed that she didn't actually throw the watch, and due to Ben sacrificing himself to stall Kevin, she wanted to give it back to him, which implied that she was gonna keep it for herself if Ben didn't do that. Anyways, cutting back to Vilgax and Kevin, revealing that the Omnitrix was actually just a grenade, resulting to Vilgax and Kevin trapped in the null void, which means they're gonna be gone for a while. Nice job, Squidhead! You blew it for both of us! After another iconic scene ensues, Which this scene does a pretty dang great job of signifying how far Ben has come as a hero with this watch. And that's the end of the episode. Honestly, 
I don't have much final thought on the episode because I already said most of it in the review itself. But this episode got the absolute right treatment with all the animation that I've seen and the plot is just very good. So many iconic things and what a send off to both Vilgax and Kevin. Even if season 2 has less of an arc, this finale is probably the best in this series. And so Ben's character growth would unfortunately revert it back. It's still a good display of him actually grown and maturing to becoming a true hero. One of the best finale. I'm giving it another S for today. And we'll move on to the next season finale and see if we can still keep up this S parade with the Ghost Freak arc, aka season 3, and it being our first two-part finale, technically. Let's see if it will live up.